Hey, what's up? Welcome to Offshore Audio. I'm Andrew, I'm a live sound engineer. This is the channel where I'm bringing you tips and tricks to mix better live events. So the question today is, should you learn to use Smart? If you don't know what Smart is, we're gonna take a look at that. And we're also gonna take a look at why I decided to learn Smart and if you really should learn to use Smart or something similar. One of the uses for it is sound system tuning, which requires a lot of EQ. So if you want something, a tool to help you learn EQ better, then I have a gift for you. And that is my three-step guide to perfect EQ. This PDF guide is totally free and it just outlines my sort of three-step formula that I take for EQing everything, whether that is individual channels or whole PA systems. Totally free, really easy to get through. Just take it with your PDF guide. You can even use it while you're at work and you get that at offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or by clicking the link in the description down below. But let's dive into smart then. So first of all, what is smart, right? Smart is a dual FFT analyzer. What does that mean? So FFT is this concept of um, breaking out, you know, a complex sound into its individual component sine waves, right? It's basically, all that's saying is that like sound happens in an instant, but we want to break out and look at how much 10 hertz, how much 20 hertz, how much one kilohertz. So the thing that's special about Smart is it allows you to take two of them and sort of compare them together and ask yourself, what's changed? What's the difference between the two of these? And the most common application of that is with tuning sound systems. Basically, you measure the sound as it comes out of the mixer, and then you measure the sound with a microphone as it comes out of the speaker, and you ask yourself, what has happened here? What has changed in this sound by coming out of the mixer and then going out of the speakers and through the room? And you can then use that information to adjust the sound coming out of the mixer, and then measure the result that happens in the room, and you can then get to a sort of desired point in the room. So like if you look at smart down here, essentially this is what you get to see, right? You, you see this uh, trace here, this is the magnitude, that is the frequency response or the difference in frequency response. So we can see here that like in the low mids, there are more low mids when it comes out of the speaker than there were, then it goes into it. So we know that the, the speaker is adding some low mids. Maybe we would want to use an EQ to trim that down maybe we're happy with it, but essentially it gives us hard data that we can use to look at that sort of thing. It also tells us the difference in phase between the signals here. I'm not going to get into how to use all this stuff. This isn't a, this isn't a how to use smart video. This is a why should you use smart video. Over here we have our RTA. This is like our FFT thing that I was talking about. You see each individual frequency here and the magnitude of each individual frequency. And this is the RTA of the FFT. Similarly, we can also change this to a spectrograph. And then this is just another way of visualizing this data. It also has really powerful spectrum measurements, sort of real-time analyzers, spectrograph, and it has an amazing SPL function. I really like my ears. I really like knowing whether I'm going to damage my hearing with the sort of sound pressure levels in the room, the loudness, shall we say. It's a really, really important tool for knowing when it is too loud. So why might you want to learn how to use it? There are sort of two use cases that I can see. The first one is that you are a system engineer. You're someone who goes around and rigs up PA systems. You fly line array systems complete with front fills and out fills, delays, and you want to make sure that there is a consistent sound throughout the whole space. That is not me. That's not what I do for a job. I'm not frequently out deploying large sound systems. I tend to sort of circulate around the same group of venues, mixing bands and conferences. So the second reason why you might do it, which is what I use Smart for, is that you're just looking for more consistency in your work. You want to be able to mix a good show every time and you don't want to leave anything to chance. And being able to measure what you do is a really great way to ensure that you get a great show every time. But my motivations for learning smart weren't so clear as they are now. When I wanted to learn it, I wanted to learn it for all the wrong reasons. Basically, I was on a job with a guy and he was using smart 
and I thought, oh man, that looks cool. I should learn how to use that. I thought that was a good, smart career move for me. And I saved up and I went and I took a smart course. It cost an enormous amount of money. And I think it was a bit of a waste of time for me. It was very theory heavy and I learn a lot by doing. So in all honesty, I'm not sure I would recommend going on a smart course. Maybe if you're really into book learning, but I would probably encourage you to just get hands on, get out there taking measurements and watch a bunch of YouTube videos and read the manual if you need that kind of information. But we'll save all the recommendations for the last part. Now I just want to fill you in a little bit about how I use Smart in my sort of day-to-day -day workplace, right? And how often do I use it? I use it basically every single day. I go in and I get my mixer ready and then one of the first things I do is I get my laptop out, connect my microphone, my interface and hook it up to the mixer so that I can take measurements. And I do this mostly just to keep my skills up with it so that if I ever need it at short notice, I either have it ready or I know that I can get it ready really, really quick. And it helps me understand the routing of the mixer as well how to get the sounds in and out where I want to get them in and out. So if I have time before a show, I try to always make time to take this sort of dual channel measurement because taking this measurement allows me to see if there's anything strange going on with the frequency response or with the phase response. And it can help me to identify a problem. Like sometimes maybe I'll load a show file and there's an EQ on the master that I've forgotten about and I've just saved on the show file. This happens to me occasionally. I could look at this graph here and say, hey, why is there a big dip? in the middle of here, that doesn't make sense. Surely it shouldn't be that. And then I go into my EQ and I can see, oh, the EQ is on. And then I remember to reset that kind of thing. So it's helpful for just verifying. Also, you can see, you know, do you have an excessive amount of sub energy if you're in a new room? Even if you don't have time to make any EQ adjustments to the system, you get a better picture of what you're working with. I use the single channel measurements all the time, Brett, because having that great RTA up there, that great measurement of all the frequencies is, is amazing for identifying feedback. I'm pretty good at identifying feedback with my ears, but sometimes you get into a place where you hear and you just can't find it. When you look at the graph and it's right there staring at you, it just makes that so much quicker. Uh, I'm not arrogant enough to think that I'm better at EQ without Smart. Uh, it's a great assist for me when I'm EQing things. Also, if you have a vocal and you have EQ'd it and you just don't think it's quite hitting the mark, you can look at this spectrum measurement and just see oh actually there's a bit of a build up in you know the low meds maybe it's that and then you can nudge your eq even just a little bit and it helps you hit that sweet spot the second thing i always use the single channel measurement thing for is is the spl as i said earlier i'm constantly measuring the spl of the shows that i'm at because i don't want to go deaf i want to know when i should really have earplugs in i want to know when the audience should have earplugs in and i'm always trying to keep the show lower you know i'm always aiming for like a sub 100 decibel show but that's not important these are just the things that i use it for but what don't i use it for i don't use it for any kind of first pass eq on a channel if i'm eqing a, a microphone i always do it by ear first and um, like i said it's not because i think i'm better but quite often i'm quicker quite often i can get EQ into shape on a microphone without looking at Smart. And if I think it sounds good, I don't even need to look at Smart. But it's good that it's always there looking after me. And just to reiterate, I don't use it for sound system alignment. That's not my job. I don't go out and I don't rig up speakers and PA systems, line arrays, and use Smart to measure them. So that is not in my day-to-day -day workflow with this piece of software. Okay, so now to the crux of the matter. Should you learn Smart? Should you go out and buy Smart or buy a Smart course? And I'm gonna say that if you're not out there deploying PA systems? The answer is no, but that doesn't mean that you should not learn some sort of tuning software. Smart is like the industry leader. It is the, you know, the brand name that is synonymous with sound system tuning and measurement, but it is not the only software. And there's a piece of software, I think it's called Open Sound Meter. I'll leave a link to that down below. And you can start taking dual channel measurements and understanding this process without bombing the exorbitant amount of money that it costs to buy a license of Smart smart, let alone to go on the course and be taught how to use smart. I think there's an enormous amount of information that you can get a hold of out there. Channels like Nathan Lively's YouTube channel, Michael Curtis's YouTube channel, 
there's also a lot of stuff on Pro Sound Web that you can read, as well as the manual for Smart is actually a great resource for this sort of stuff. And you can learn the fundamentals behind what you're doing, and you can sort of experiment bit by bit without dropping an enormous amount of money. You just need a sort of decent laptop, an audio interface, and a measurement microphone. And again, you don't need to bomb loads of money on a measurement microphone. The one I use is like a hundred dollars, hundred euros it was. So it's not a big deal. I'll leave a link to that microphone as well if you want to use that. I think before you invest in something like Smart, you want to ask yourself what it is that you want to measure. I think you want to be really, really fluent with connecting everything up and taking those measurements. And you want to be really good at asking the right questions. What am I measuring and why? What am I looking for here? And I think before you buy something as expensive as Smart, you really should be really, really interested in it. You should be really, really interested in speakers and you should probably be interested in becoming a system designer. And then you need to learn how to design a sound system and deploy it measure that in the software that's available and then use smart on location to decide has it varied based on what your measurements told you. So long story short, don't do what I do and just throw a bunch of money at a problem. Think, identify the problem, ask yourself, do I need this? The answer is probably not yet. Download the free stuff, get to grips with it on the cheap before deciding to invest further. I'll leave some videos around here about sound system setups and EQing sound systems, just so that you can see a little bit how I might do that without Smart. And if you can subscribe to the channel, that would really, really help me out. It makes YouTube think that I'm a cool guy. Don't forget to download your free three-step guide to perfect EQ in the description down below. And for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.